high above Himalayas. Boy, boy, boy the air getting get thinner. thinner. But how's, how's the, the breath? breath? Not so no bad. bad. Can we go, Can we go higher? higher? We'll see. We'll see. What happened, what happened the last, the last time, time that all three all major three indexes, indexes hit their all-time high, 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 high on the on same, the same day. day? Who is Who Tina, Tina, and why, and is, why she is she affecting the market, the market so much? So Hello, this is Michael Loftus, Loftus Wall Strategies, and welcome to our latest weekly video for Friday ending August the 12th. Right to the numbers, pretty quiet week last week, despite the hype about reaching all-time highs. So S&P 6.85 for the year, Dow 6.61, NASDAQ continues to inch up at 4.5. Reviewing the news, last time all three stock indexes broke records, a long tumble came. So... Is this, in fact, true? When I came in this weekend, I put together this chart, okay? And I'm looking at two things. One is the S&P line, which is red, okay? The next piece, the green in the background, is actually GAT, uh, Generally Accepted Accounting Practices Earnings, okay? So I overlay the two. You go back to the 97, 90, 80s, we come up to 2000, all-time highs, all-time highs. Earnings start decelerating, and we know what happens there. Very similar picture in 07, 09 period, and here we are now. Market's gone straight up. We have had three all-time highs recently. All right, we have locked in here in this little range, but if you look at the trend behind there with gap earnings, we're now six quarters of straight down earnings. Not saying it's going to happen, but this is one thing I'm going to try and do in this video is bring in some other facts, not just the charts about looking at the past and see if it can help us in the future. Now, past performance does not guarantee future results, nor does past behavior on the markets, but I do like to look at these as a guide. This is another one, something new, right? New York uh, margin debt, NYSC margin debt, debt in the markets, okay? The blue line is the S&P. The red line, okay, is actually margin debt. People taking margin against their investments to buy more investments or whatever the case might be. If you look at the trend, okay, each time, this is actually a negative correlation here. So when you see the red line, which is margin debt going down, it actually means it's going up, okay? You can look at here in the tech bubble, 07, and where we've been during this past market. Big numbers, they are starting to come back up, very similar okay to previous markets so our folks getting a little more conservative paying down that margin more to come on that one the next one how oil prices are trapped in a vicious cycle in one chart has this not been the case we've seen oil really between 40 42 45 coming down going up and it really comes down to supply what's going on with opec declines and it's just this vicious cycle we keep on seeing so right now the only good thing i see about oil uh in the recent markets is the breaking of the s p meaning it seemed to be very correlated early in the year which is really has not happened in the past so the fact that it's oil is moving independently in the market i think is a good thing so more to follow there going to some additional data in the charts not going to do a lot of charts today, just some backup data as far as the markets. But the first question I had from one of our viewers was to better explain the ratio chart, okay, where I took the S&P versus the bond market on a ratio chart, okay. And here it is from last week as you see the downtrend, okay. But you also see that in this particular week it was in an uptrend. So why does it look like this? Well, for starters, Bonds have outperformed the market this year, even with the recent bounce back. Okay, so for those who like the technical side of things, here's the actual reasoning with close, bond close, opens, highs, lows, etc. Okay, obviously the system figures this out for us. But in its simplest term, if the line is rising in the first ticker, it's outperforming. If the line is falling in the second ticker, it's outperforming. Okay, so... If you look at the first chart there, S&P versus 
the bonds, you see it going up. This was last week. Le uh, excuse me, two weeks ago, where last week, same chart, and you see it declining. So last week, in fact, bonds outperform. I utilize this with a lot of stocks. I can't talk about specific stocks in our videos, but I'll take a specific uh, social media stock and I can compare ratio to that sector or a retail versus the re retail sector, whether it's discretion, staples, et cetera. So it gives me a good view in the market. So hopefully that was helpful. From there, I talked about breadth in our opening statement there. You know, once again, market breadth continues to be very strong when you look at this chart. At the top is the S&P. When you look at the second chart, that is actually the 200-day moving average on, on breadth. And we're still north of 70%, which is a big number. Below is the 50-day, although we're starting to come down a little bit. So our watch in this one, our market breadth in the 50-day is, in fact, pulling back. So let's watch that a little bit closer here in the next week. Next up, who is Tina and how does she affect the market? So Tina, there is no alternative, right? We've been hearing this in the industry this year about Tina. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's a chart of some of the bond yields out there. Well, there's no alternative but U.S. So last week, we saw our treasuries once again break below 150. There is no alternative. The same thing can be said for the S&P, the markets, right? The yield on the S&P is higher than bonds. So that's why we've seen more and more action, albeit slow, going into the U.S. markets, both stocks and bonds. Next chart, productivity. Very interesting came out the other day. This is the, uh, the first time since 1979. Not a good time, if you recall. I remember as a child lining up for gas in Conshohocken, and PA. The last time we had three negative quarters in a row, productivity was 1979. Very, very interesting. More to follow there. Okay, next up, PPI, producer price index. The trend is not your friend. We see it going straight down here. I think the big shocker last week was retail. Even though we had some decent retail earnings come out, the retail sector as a whole is, in fact, pulled back. So more to watch there. Last thing I'm going to show is volume. We've talked about this all year, especially specifically about how this market is getting tired out. If we go back to January, we're averaging about 130 million shares a day in the equivalent ETF of the S&P 500. Got up to about a 158, 160 number in March. Right now, we're at 93 million. More importantly, if you look at last week, we went from 39 to 69 million. That's it. There is no conviction on this market right now. So next up, not too much on the uh, overall information as far as data, but that's what I wanted to show this week was data and what was happening in the market. Lastly, indicators, nothing has changed. As of now, we're still fully invested. Until we see some cracks, we're going to stay with it. Why? Tina, there is no alternative. So in fact, we'll continue to stay invested until we see some cracks. Did we hear about some of those this morning? Once again, Japan disappoints. China came out with a little bit better than expected news. Europe in general kind of still flat. I think those are the three big things that we're going to watch here and see how it affects our market. So as always, we hope this information was informative. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Check out our websites. Join us on any of our social media platforms. We hope to see you soon. This is Michael Loftus, Loftus Wall Strategies. Thank you so much and make it a great week.